March 23rd, 2017, stellar mass loss is on the agenda. Very important. I printed out this Wikipedia page because I noticed how incredibly short it is. Look, look, there's basically nothing on it. You know? Oh, a few references. Whoop de doo. Stellar mass loss is a prime example of establishment science not knowing what they're doing. They don't have anything losing mass. It's special to lose mass, okay? There's a flare event, there's a coronal mass ejection, whoop de doo I find it very odd how on this entire page there's no there's no mention of solar wind. Every single star that has a spectrum or basically is comprised of plasma has solar wind. The the material is leaving the star, it's exiting the star. All these stars, the, the sun, all wolf riot stars, all red giants, we have a problem with those. I'll talk about that later. All, all the stars that shine have large amounts of mass loss as they evolve. They're cooling. They're losing mass. It doesn't matter if there's no, if there's no flares to begin with, it's still going to be losing mass. And billions of years of this mass loss, the thing is going to be very, very tiny. I guarantee it. It's like constantly chipping away at it. Give enough time, it doesn't matter how big the star is, it's going to end up very, very tiny, and the hard, rocky remains are going to be left over in the center. So, to them, mass loss is a, is a special event. Nothing, nothing too important, nothing too, too serious. Unfortunately, that's one of their greatest uh, weaknesses. Here I have a paper entitled Stellar Evolution and Planet Formation are Mass Loss Phenomenon. Now in stellar metamorphosis you have stars as young planets and planets as ancient stars are the same thing. So naturally, if a star loses mass and becomes a planet, it means planet formation itself is a mass loss phenomenon. It's not a mass gain phenomenon. In establishment, they have Earth being a mass gain phenomenon, meaning the dust clumps together into centimeter-sized particles, which then clump together into meter-sized particles, which then clump together to kilometer-sized particles, and then those kilometer-sized things clump together, and then that's how you form a planet. It's really strange to think about it in those kinds of terms, because to form a planet, it actually requires something really, really hot, and really, really big, and it's very, very time-consuming. Uh, the basic fundamentals of it are the material goes into the center of the star, clumps together in the center, and then the star loses its mass over many billions of years, leaving the hard, rocky ball in the center called the planet. And we can see this process happening in all the objects we observe in the galaxy. I mean, that are, you know, stars or planets. And... They're at either one stage or another of losing mass as they cool and die. So, essentially it's another Occam's razor. I'll read this portion out for you. Establishment has planets gaining mass to form, and stars evolutionary paths neither gain significant or lose significant mass in, in, in large amounts. I mean, sure, you have a, a random flare event to them, and oh, it lost a little bit of mass, but they don't change. They mostly remain static. So, essentially, in establishment, you have static and mass-gaining structures, which are two mutually exclusive processes regarding mass. To simplify it, we need to realize that both stellar evolution and planet formation are just mass-loss processes. It's, it's one process. There isn't two, there isn't a static, and everything is really big, and nothing changes significantly, and then you have a mass-gain phenomenon. No. They have it backwards and inside out. You have just mass loss phenomenon. And granted, if you have enough time, these large massive objects will be very small. Obviously I said that. And the reason why this is important is because it's another Occam's razor. It's We go with the simplest explanation versus a multitude of explanations which are quite complex and require uh, mechanisms that haven't been observed and also requires them to ignore mechanisms that need to be there for in order for them to 
carry out their processes, such as the uh, the angular momentum problem. You know, why does Jupiter and Saturn have the majority of the angular momentum of the solar system if they form from a disk? That alone completely falsifies the nebula hypothesis. Yet, what they do is they ignore it because, you know, they're, they're boneheaded, I guess. I don't know. But, anyways, I'll link this paper to the bottom. Uh, I think I made it long enough. There's, there's two, there's two different processes in the establishment, and there's one in stellar metamorphosis regarding mass. Alright, y'all. Later.